Um, oh, the meeting's being recorded. Okay. Uh, yes, indeed. Hey, Jonathan. Hi. Good to see you. Yes, great to see you too. Thanks. And I'm glad to be back. Yeah, you know what? I heard something happened, but I don't know any details. How are you? I'm great. Uh, I'm good. I I had uh, acute pancreatitis last week. Ooh. And it put me in the hospital for three days. And they finally let me out. And uh, now I'm pretty much back to normal. That's amazing. Glad you're doing better. Sorry? I'm glad you're doing better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So how's everybody else? I'm much better than I was probably last time we talked. I okay. My post-travel time was pretty intense, but I've made it out the other end stronger than before, hopefully. Oh, great. Great. So I... You know, one of the things that happened to me when I got sick was that I completely forgot everything that happened to before last Wednesday. So did we have a plan for today, tonight? We did. Plan? Max Were you working with Max. Max is the, the guy in the middle, which I'm calling yeah. the warm seat as opposed yeah. to the hot seat. And um and we're trying out the collective coaching process that's based on the theory you stuff. Okay. And so I'm going to be uh, talking a little bit about it just to set a frame following the example of the woman that I've been uh, attending sessions with, a couple sessions with. And, uh, and, Max is up for the experiment, as is Chad, who co-hosts, so in the spirit of experimenting. And as I said in my um, message to you on Earth Regenerators, you know, I'm, I'm totally open to make room for other experiments and whatnot, but that's the one that we have for today. Right. Yeah. Well, that's really great. And uh, Victoria and I cooked up a little idea uh earlier and i wanted to float that it'll probably take 10 or 15 minutes but yeah and and it's really a kind of teaser for what we might do next or one of the things we might do next so um if i have a chance to present that, can I'm i ask something to... oh yes of course hi pam hi pam um hi everybody Jonathan, why don't we find out how long the agenda will be before we do this, you know, well, taking 10 to 15 minutes? Yeah, this is kind of an immersion experience for Max and uh, Maya. So I think that's kind of open-ended. But we could have a little period beforehand for announcements or uh, okay. things like that. And just for people to catch Okay. Up. Well, I also, okay, great. And Maya, did you plan for any such time of doing anything else? How did your agenda go? Um, I, I uh, let me put the link in the chat. Um, this isn't necessarily a link for everyone in the universe, but this is the- uh, Sorry, I meant how much time do you need? <laughs> you don't need to go through the well no i mean i had the whole thing planned out like i did oh, okay. last time um so i did have a couple minutes for announcements but i mean we can adjust we can just it will just take away from the amount of time that we're spending on some of the sections with with max and you know it's all an experiment at this point so and i feel like you know obviously we're doing it in the context of this series of meetings and so it makes sense and then also i built into the end seven minutes for feedback so that that's also part of maybe time that we have more meta about this so what what feels right to you well i would say jonathan if you could do it in five minutes oh sure and then you know we can spend as much time yeah. in the future on it okay yeah. 
And you can just talk. I don't need to talk. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great. I really appreciate oh, the time and the thoughtfulness that you put into this. So wait a couple more minutes, but you know, maybe we can go around and do a check-in quickly. And um, then I'll just share, you know, this one thought, which is a I would classify as a half-baked idea, which I hope to get baked sometime at one of these future sessions, maybe the next one. Um and then, you know, I I don't know if you have an opening ritual, Maya, that you would like us to do after the check-ins? Yeah, you know, we'll have a, a meditation. Chad will lead a meditation before we go into Max, but that will come later. So for now, okay. you know, I was thinking we could just offer a one-word check-in as, like, what quality of presence or what quality would support you right now just feeling into what would feel supportive to you personally and then what quality do you want to invite into our collective space today just tapping into that heart connection with yourself and with each other And I'll, I can start with offering peaceful joy. And I'll pass it to Victoria. Peaceful satisfaction. <laughs> Chad? Admiration. And I'll pass it on to Max. I will say flow as a nickname for mellifluous. And I'll pass it to Pam. Um. um bigger anticipation, shame among the Great Lakes. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um, whatever it is, is like the birds that float between the trees around me. Jonathan. Oh, wonderful. Great to see JP as well. So the quality that I would like to invite is inspiration. And um, we'll uh, invite JP to bring her word into the conversation. Uh, you know, one word, the, the quality that you want to bring and that speaks to your heart. Sunshine. <laughs> great, great. Well, that's good. And in the interest of time, I thought I would, you know, as Victoria suggested, take about five minutes to share this idea that we cooked up. Now, I say we cooked it up because this is the first real conversation we've had about it. But for me, this idea goes back 20 or 30 years. So it's something I've been thinking about. Uh, and I think it's actually now perhaps is the time to do it. Uh, it has occurred to me that there is an enormous amount of work that needs to get done in the world. Um, you know, everywhere you look, restoring land, healing relationships, dealing with, you know, injustice, uh, all of these things, is, there's no limit on what needs to be done and could be done productively and regeneratively. There's just not, as far as I can tell, we're not, if, we, if we use that as our criterion for creating jobs, and livelihoods, we would never run out of things, uh, creating uh, roles for earth stewards. So it occurred to me that if we started up a little entity, let's call it an employment agency, and um, we 
basically the group that would start it would decide if they'd like to do it as a worker co-op. That's what I would see it as. Um, and the employment agency would bring people in and have them apply for jobs, quote unquote. But in reality, what they'd be applying for is a place in the worker co-op and they'd be evaluated for what their skills were, what their interests were, what their needs were, and so on and so forth. And then the group as an organization, which of course would have to run on pro-social and CDP and things like this, would then uh, decide how to deploy its resources, its human resources, in order to create livelihoods for all of the people in the group. And some people might need more than others, but, you know, that could all be worked out. I mean, we had these conversations in a sense. Now, I thought of it first as an employment agency or a, you know, recruitment organization. And as soon as I kind of came up with that, Victoria said, well, we could do an outplacement service and really do a much better job than the official outplacement companies and work with corporations to bring people out of the corporate world, over across the divide, into the regenerative economy. And, you know, it's going to take some work, but that's that would really be the work of the organization to work these things through. And, you know, if it was successful, it could grow. It could, you know, fish them and create more copies of itself. So that's kind of the core idea. And what I wanted to do is just leave people with that as a possibility for something that we could pick up next time, because actually it's very much in line with the Earth Regenerators ER fund hope to create uh, livelihoods for fellows. And, you know, that it's not just a project by project thing, but it's a person by person thing. So that's my thought about, and it, it's just such a simple idea. Uh, and of course, it's not one that, uh, you know, um, the corporate, that corporate America would be terribly excited about. But on the other hand, if it was less expensive than current outplacement services, maybe they would be excited about it and would get on board with it. Hello, Mitty, and so happy to see you here. And please give us your one word check in of what you want to bring. And, um, and uh, hopefully I'll share my idea with you separately. And then we could go on to the main course for this evening. And Chad, if you wanted to manage and facilitate some of this, I'm quite happy to have you do it. Um, and, uh, you know, or we could just carry on. I mean, usually these groups are pretty much self-managing. Everybody is so polite. It's really wonderful and uh, so appreciative of each other and uh, so respectful of each person's contribution that I have no concerns. So, Nidhi? <laughs> I'm coming late. <laughs> That's it for the moment. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, then we will turn it over to you, Maya. And uh, you can unfold the evening as you see fit. Wonderful. Thank you, Jonathan. That felt like such a warm, a warm opening. Even as you were sharing your idea, it, there was so much warmth in that that I really appreciated, and I'm excited to see what unfolds from that. Um, so today, as we had planned uh, last time this particular group met, um, that Max will be in the warm seat, which I'm using instead of hot seat today and will be the center of our collective inquiry and sensing into uh, something, let's just say uh, in the invitation is to go deeper than the thinking level and go down all the way into the sensing level. And um, whereas I have experimented with the creative presencing in this context last time with Gail, um, this time I learned about a thing called collective coaching, 
that's based on the theory U and uh, theory U being developed by uh, Otto Scharmer at MIT and uh, and y Yannick is the name of the woman who is, has developed that into a collective coaching process. So I'm following her sort of pattern of how to run a meeting like this. And um, so what it's basically gonna be is I'll take a few minutes to just outline sort of the theory, a little bit of the theory behind the type of inquiry that we're gonna do. And then um, uh, Chad is gonna lead a little guided meditation for us to get in the mood. And then uh, we're going to hear Max's story. And we'll have about 15 minutes for that where he can say what he wants about where he's at. And if there's time in that 15 minutes, we can ask questions and clarify. Um, I think it's important to note that this process isn't about giving advice and it's not about ideas like that we have for Max. And so that kind of thing, um, please, that's also awesome. And if you have that kind of thing, uh, it's uh, Max welcomes you to to send him an email or or send him a note on ER. Uh, this process is going to be more intuitive and uh, felt sense kind of level of sharing. So anyway, Max will share his thing and uh, we can ask questions to clarify and there's not advice giving at any point during this. And then we'll take after that two, two minutes to sit in silence and sort of listen to his story again in our, in our hearts, I guess we could say, and feel into what that is, what's coming up for us and I'll, I'll I'll give more instruction along the way. And then we'll do some mirroring, reflecting back to him the, the images and metaphors and gestures and things like that that come up for us uh, during that listening time. And then we'll go into a generative dialogue that is more of a back and forth following on the ideas that come up and that are shared I say ideas, but more like following the threads of the, the metaphors and things that come up. And then we'll have a chance for final comments and a closing. And then we'll take time to just take a step back and say, hey, how'd that go? Just uh, as an extra step given this context here. So, um, I want to start by just sharing uh, a a wonderful image, and actually, I will put this in the the chat here. Um, this is a fun image to look at if you want to know more about um, the theory U. Uh, but I will uh, let me see, share screen, um, and just let's see. Uh, I just want to go through some things. It looks like a lot, but um, it is a lot. Just to say this is what we're doing today is part of a much larger system. And I just want to focus in here, like, like this is Max. And we're going to help him, like, be in touch with and follow his authentic self. And to do that with an open mind an open heart, and open will. And parallel to those things is the, the type of conversation that we're going to have. And Theory U talks about different kinds of conversations. There's four kinds of conversations. There's downloading. And that's um, basically talking nice, what others want to hear. It's about sort of repeating ideas that you already know, it's habitual. And then there's debate and it's talking through something. It's what do I think? What do you think? And debate is deeper in that from that level, you can actually take in new ideas 
this is sort of just old regurgitated ideas. This is where you're, you open your mind to more. And then this next level is a reflective inquiry dialogue. It says, I'm not my point of view, seeing myself as part of the whole. And here we, um, we let go of cynicism and open our hearts to each other in a deeper uh, inquiry process. And then what we're really aiming for here is into this collective creativity and a generative flow. And it's about speaking from what is moving through us rather than anything we know or anything someone else is telling us. It's, it's really that level where those images and, and dreams and metaphors come up. So, so we're, we're creating a space with the, our silence and our in, shared intention to tap into that. And, and the way that they talk about this is that each of these levels has a different layer of power, basically. At the top, just it's like same old story and each layer down sort of goes deeper into what makes a real difference in life. And so in the theory you approach, they, they talk about starting with downloading, going into seeing, into sensing, and then presencing. And then from there, and this is this is sort of where we're going to try to hang out today. Later steps would be crystallizing and prototyping and performing and those kind of stages that have practical actions and things like that. That's a later part of a creative process here. But um, the invitation is to really support Max to know himself better um, and to find those openings that come uh openings of mind, heart, and will. So that's the best I can do to share a bit about um, the theory behind what we're doing. And so with that said, let me get my notes up here again. Um, are there any questions before we, yeah, I do have, so then, then all of the rest of us here are going to be coaches for Max. Um, when Yannick leads this, she limits it to seven coaches. Um, and so actually that's just about the great number and I'll be hosting and Chad is co-helping me sense the whole. And I'm seeing some comments here. Thank you, JP. Um, Oh, and thank you, Victoria. Glad that that helped. It's a really wonderful chart if you want to just study that more. Um, okay, so then if we don't have any questions, then uh, I invite Chad to guide us into a meditation, and then we'll transition there into Max sharing his story. Okay, thank you, Maya. Um, and I'm especially uh, honored to be able to deliver this guided meditation because it is um, a new addition to Maya's magical book of healing light remedies and meditations. And after Maya, I'll be the first to have delivered it. <laughs> so thanks, Maya, for the invitation. And... Um, and this is a, a freshly generated, never spoken before meditation. And our focus will be on beautiful blue spheres of light. So get comfortable. Um, get your sit bones in your chair and your feet on the ground or in any way that makes you feel grounded. Take a deep breath. Breathe gently and relax. If it feels right, close your eyes or soften your gaze. Breathe gently and relax. Now feel your connection to the heart 
of creation. Feel your connection to the heart of creation. As you breathe out, gently release whatever you don't need right now. Gently release whatever you don't need right now. Now, imagine beautiful blue spheres of light gently releasing stuck energies in your body and mind. Imagine beautiful blue spheres of light gently releasing stuck energies in your body and mind. Feel this reverberating in your body and mind. Beautiful blue spheres of light gently releasing stuck energies in your body and mind. The healing power of the blue spheres of light has been set in motion. The light will continue on its own and complete its work, even as you shift your attention elsewhere. Now, when you're ready, gently bring your attention back to your breath, back to your physical surroundings. Wiggle those fingers and toes and return your attention to our shared presence. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Thank you, Max. I mean, Chad, thank you. That was so fun to receive that. And your voice definitely works as a meditation leader. So now we turn our attention to Max. And there's a specific invitation for him to uh, and I'll put this in the chat to reflect on various aspects of his experience. And I'll read them out. These are our loose uh, guidelines of what he might cover. So the invitation is to take a moment to reflect on your sense of calling, then clarify these questions. The current situation, what key challenge or question are you up to again? Uh, what stakeholders, how might others view this situation? Your intention, what future are you trying to create? The threshold, what do you need to let go of and what do you need to learn? And help, where do you need input or help? And the invitation to the rest of us is to listen deeply. And if there's time, we can ask clarifying questions, but this isn't the time for advice. And just listen with the heart as deeply as you are moved. And um, chat, or Max, when you're ready, uh, go ahead and begin. Okay, thank you very much, Maya, Chad. Just definitely want to note at the beginning that I remember um, a book club meeting, perhaps a year and a half ago, where the question, the subject, um, we were discussing was where are the elders and I remember feeling that question very deeply and wondering 
where one might find a council of elders um, to engage with in order to do something similar to what Jonathan is describing is finding direction, you know, that is in service to everything. And so I'm um, truly humbled to be here um, in somewhat uh, of a similar position as was um, once sought um, today. So, um, and I'm going to kind of go through a little bit in a chronological kind of thinking about my life to express where I'm at right now. And then um, I just feel like I'm going to be able to transmit a deeper um, communication of where I'm at in that manner um, as compared with going through the questions sequentially. Maya, is that okay? Yeah, definitely follow your instinct and we can right. ask clarifying questions if we need to. Okay, great. And please do. Yeah. Okay. So, um, right livelihood. Um, I recall growing up in a household in which my, I, I, with two parents who despised <laughs> their work, <laughs> um, and, um, who I didn't see much of cause they worked a lot. And so I believe I internalized a sense of, um, rebelliousness with respect to the work world. Um, and I carried that through um, my youth, um, although I did do well in school um, because I appreciated the challenge and didn't have to try very hard. But um, I remember getting graduating from college and finding myself in um, uh, a position of not having any interest whatsoever in finding any kind of work other than just enough work to <laughs> buy food and pay rent <laughs> essentially so um i yes um however um that only led me i guess further along a somewhat um, darkened path um uh and until I had an experience, or not really an experience, but um, I began to have an awakening process um, uh, over the course of years that entailed uncovering, you know, my um, uh, kind of deeply held um, anger towards the way that the world was working, um, as well as having contact with the spiritual realms and seeing a slice of reality that for me felt um, so much deeper and more um, just more meaningful than seemed to be uh, mentioned or spoken of in um, among people that I knew in the culture that I had come to know. And so I began to I began a process um, of trying to figure out how to fit that awareness into my circumstances. Um, I remember at that time thinking that um, I had only been interested in music growing up because it was one of, it was perhaps the only acceptable manner in which I could express my creativity in a manner that was recognized as valuable. And I remember thinking, that's not actually who I am. That was just an outlet for me. And so I began searching for ways to participate in the world, um, which honored my, got my higher guidance and my, um, my values, which were outside of the sphere of music. I felt that there had to be something um, there had to be something deeper or stranger because that was the nature of the experience that I was having was quite um, magical, really. Um, um, and I uh, found earth regenerators and I found um, support in that time to continue to explore these things and ended up um, traveling all across the United States which was a decision I made instead of going to Barichara, I believe, 
because I felt that I still wanted to, I still needed a sense of autonomy and I was concerned that if I went to Bari Char, I would be narrowed into um, perhaps another, another person or community's way of doing things. And I wasn't sure if that's, if I was ready to commit to something that felt limited. I still needed that liberty that I, I guess was denied to me growing up in certain ways. Um, however, in doing so and in trying to start um, a like a regenerative <laughs> microeconomy <laughs> that failed miserably, I realized how challenging and frustrating and frankly just not very joyful it can be to try to invent something entirely novel. Um, and I also found during that time that um, my greatest tool that I had at that point for, um, let's say, um, having a benevolent influence on the, on the cultural evolution that I was witnessing was actually through music because I found that people were <clears throat> authentically in compelled and appreciative of the music that I provided them um, in a way that showed me, okay, here's a manner by which I can hopefully begin to do this work of um, supporting us to see what is, see what is magical in, in the world again, and to reincorporate um, uh, the, I guess just the grandeur of being a sentient being on a miraculous planet. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so um, and then I, in, in doing the project that failed miserably, I was found by someone who was struck by how similar the way that I spoke about my aspirations was to the way that her sister spoke about her aspirations. And she connected us and that was Sarah who I now live with and is uh, my partner. Um, and so we began to, <laughs> we, we had, a, you know, we had a, a fraught several months of trying to figure out what our project was and how we were going, you know, another, you know, wave of really fighting to try to come up with something novel or just to figure out how we could wield our mutual energies, um, which ultimately came again back around to this sense of like, well, I am going to see how I can get to a place where I can make a make a living uh, with music so that I can then focus on deeper, more longer term regenerative projects that are more so the stuff of my dreams. Um, and so just sort of incrementally, let's say, stepping toward um, right livelihood. Um, and um, where I am currently is that I make about half of my income playing gigs in Massachusetts. Um, and uh, some of which are on farms, which, are, which is a great delight to be able to perform in, in an agricultural space. Um, and also now in the present moment, I hold visions of the future, which are that um, I would like to begin um, let's say weaving um, a circuit across the Mississippi catchment um, basement basin um, of places, permaculture farms, uh, perhaps other regenerative land projects um, where I can go and I can um, share my music as a way of bringing people in and creating a container for communal um, experience and sense making and healing. Um, yeah, I'll leave it there. I imagine it being, you know, the ultimately the production of many people and especially folks that are living in the spaces and um, doing weaving in this manner, essentially like magnetizing, let's say, nodes within the Mississippi River Basin and uh, with music. Um, Um, so yeah, that is, that's, I guess, kind of just an overview of 
where I am at right now. Um, I guess I will also say that, um, well, I can get in, I, I will get into that in a different order. So um, that's my current situation. Key challenge or question I'm up against. Um, you know, um, well, I just want to answer this like from the mind perspective, it's sort of like there is so much that I can be doing. I have a few projects that I'm working on right now. Um, there are so, there are so many things I can be researching, um, so many people I can be interacting with. And frankly, I've felt pretty good and steady and like there's not a lot of ambiguity about my path. But I guess if I had to name a challenge, it's sort of like, am I focusing on the right things? You know, I, I am largely doing this work in an insular fashion. I mean, you know, we talk about things in earth regenerators, but uh, there is a sense that I need to be connected to things that I'm not currently actively connected with. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, on the level of the heart, um, it's really finding home uh, to some degree, you know, obviously my um, occupation or my intentions will entail traveling quite a bit, but, or at least for some months out of the year. Um, but I'm both drawn to the Mississippi, uh, catchment area because of a long line of ancestry, uh, in that area, as well as, um, just connections and resources that I already have in that area. But I'm also drawn to a particular area of the Pacific Northwest that really spoke to me when I went there in my travels um on like a on a deep some like something was communicating to an aspect of me that i wasn't conscious of level um um yeah so there's that um stakeholders how might others view this situation well i feel like i'll find a lot of support from people that are doing land-based work but don't have the like sort of cultural uh tools to generate um, enthusiasm for their projects or for support and weaving for their projects. Because again, people are um, just innately interested in the kind of experiences that music brings, etc. Um, so that's how I think about that. But obviously, I'm speaking about that in a somewhat um, naive way, because I'm just imagining that I don't really know how things will go. I mean, I do have a couple of connections that do suggest that that would be the case but um okay what kind of future am i trying to create i am trying to create a future in which um people are, are able to thrive um based on bioregional economies um and that in which people are able to actually this is a really big piece for my soul people are able to wander the land people are able to um, roam um, a liberated landscape. Um, I'm really interested in a future in which we have um, like a diminished amount of the area is privately owned and that um, people have the freedom to explore and interact and relate with the earth in a more natural way than the parceled out manner in which um, we find ourselves. So that's kind of a deep intention. Okay, I've got three minutes remaining. Thank you. Um, two minutes remaining. Um, threshold, what do you need to let go of? And what do you need to learn? You know, what I need to let go of is even more kind of like deliberative mental energy, because I know what it feels like to, to live and act from the heart, you know, and I know that since I've, I've experienced connection with like a much, um, let's say, I've, I've experienced the world as an antenna that has a much broader frequency range and that generate that the heart generates. Um, and I would like to be able to live from that space more often. Um, help, where do you need input or help? Um, you know, um, yeah, again, I just, I would like to kind of not be engaging in this mission, let's say, of although I don't like that word for certain reasons, um, of creating um, a tour uh, circuit, um, but like receiving input from people that are, you know, more tapped into different areas that are relevant to that process. Okay, thank you. I'm complete. <laughs> wow, beautiful job, Max. Mm, thank you.
Thank you. And so now uh, I'll paste into the chat here our assignment for two minutes of silence. And the invitation is to listen to your heart. And connect with your heart to what you've heard. Listen to what resonates, what images, metaphors, feelings, and gestures come up for you that capture the essence of what you've heard. What images, metaphors, feelings, and gestures come up for you that capture the essence of what you've heard. And I'll ring the bell in two minutes to end our silence. So now we will move into the mirroring part, and we have the instructions from Yannick in the chat here. What images, feelings, gestures, and metaphors come up? Uh, each of you is invited to share what came up for you in the silence or while listening to Max's story. And then after each coach has had a chance, then Max will uh, offer some reflections. So it's not a back and forth right now. It's just offering your images and feelings and such to the space. And I'll go first just because it came up and it's short. Um, I had this picture of when I thought about the circuit of like having some kind of regular path that's walked in this uh, liberated landscape. And uh, the image came up of a maypole, I think it's what it's called, when the kids sort of weave in and out the ribbons around the pole. And there's just something so beautiful and communal about that. And um, and then what came up was that the, the, there was a freedom and a joy in the movement. And then there was also the constraint of the pole. And that felt like that which we are all in service to, like a central, a central um, inspiration, a shared inspiration. So we each have about a minute um, or less than a minute actually to share what your what came up for you. Um, so please uh, unmute when you feel moved. I've got a crazy one to offer. Um, the first words that came to me were modern day troubadour. And then up came Puss in Boots. And I thought, 
Puss in Boots, and I, I know there are movies with Puss in Boots, but I was thinking of the ancient fairy story where the miller dies and he leaves his son's various bequests and the youngest son just gets the family cat. And at first he feels he's been given the bad end of the stick, but then he discovers the cat is magic and all the cat asks for is a pair of boots. And the cat is the magic man who enables the son to become really fortunate and marry the woman of his dreams and so on and so forth. That's my image. Thank you. Jonathan. So really wonderful because I got the same sense of a wandering troubadour and that the part of the purpose of the music is to ease people past our traumas into this liberated space. Um, and, and that that is regenerative work in itself. Uh, and, you know, so desperately needed. So that's what I saw. And I, you know, I just love that you enjoy doing that and that you can see yourself taking that around the valley uh, and linking people together that way and having conversations with them about what they hope for and, um, you know, what moves them inwardly what gives what feels nourishing to them and what gives them joy so thank you so much it's a wonderful image jp oh i got so much and there's there's echoes in the room it's great um so the first image that came was actually of effervescence of just sort of bubbles in in clear water just that dancing energy of that and then I saw you Max with this massive floating giant ribbon behind you and uh, it was it was in the air uh, and very beautiful catching the sun and uh, and it was moving the way that you know those uh, those Chinese ribbons on the ends of sticks move you know that beautiful Thing. that's how it was moving uh, and everybody everybody there was a, an audience uh, was watching this in in enraptured um, and then it turned into a magic carpet and you got on it and it was sailing over that glorious landscape and it was the sense was that you were offering a perspective and a view of the wonder and beauty that is possible just by being on the carpet as you were. So that's what I saw. Beautiful, Chad. That's great. Um, I actually, I'm gonna swivel in this way. So I'm facing you Max, over the hill. <laughs> Um, we're, we're uh, almost kind of kidding here. Um, so I, um, so I was picturing uh, Max, you as this a songbird, the songbird who is being tempted into the enclosure, and you heard the the music of the woodlands, and realized you could join the chorus and began singing, and the other birds found their way out of the enclosure and. Not just birds, but other creatures, um, and even the keepers of the cages themselves. <laughs> yeah. It was very joyous. Beautiful. Shane. Well, thank you. Um, Chad saw a lot of maybe what I saw. I arrived with an image 
this evening of birds um, bouncing between the trees. The, uh, the goldfinches undulate, and this movement has become definitive, maybe, for my idea of freedom. Um, and the open heart wants to express an envy of your plan and its solidity, almost, um, and, and its freedom. And those are contradictory, but I'm holding them both. Um, but back to the bird, the lightness of the bird is key to its ability to travel. And an image that came up was you scrabbling up a slippery, muddy slope to find a fence at the top. And it's countered by something just lifting, just a lightness. It says, you can go over that fence if you're light enough, up that slope, etc. That's all I got. Thank you, Shane. Pam. It started with a spider's web and this notion of um, a pattern of um, collapse and how the spider's web that we're all caught in is breaking apart. And so I, I saw this part of the spiders, what was caught in the spider's web, which is you dropping to the ground. And here's another pattern, is the traveling troubadour and uh, moving with the land as it moves. And the traveling light and being nimble and having a whole lot of tools in that caravan, one of them a guitar, another maybe a, not a tool, a companion and you're a very good woman. Um, and um, a responsiveness and nimbleness to the situation, to the needs of the situation. So wash dishes one day, take to the road the next day, sing songs in this, those wonderful, some of those wonderful towns where they've got the center, the town center intact, perform and play and just play and accepting what is there. Victoria. Um. I got a very clear image of a jester in uh, the court, a court in probably France or England in the 17th, 18th century. And the jester was the smartest person in the room and was always uh, enchanting, entrancing bringing up the truth in a not too confronting way, but an uncomfortable but enticing way. Uh, uh, truth teller, 
and the gestures were very um uh i forget the movies that um that that had these kind of people like victor victoria maybe or but just they were just like a gesture in the 17th 18th century or someone during the 20 the roaring 20s in france you know just life is you know carpe diem um but all the truth too so and then it changed to and and it was magical so the gesture was a was telling stories, music, singing, dancing, entrancing, basically entertaining and drawing people into more um, touch with reality um, and what they want to. And then it switched to something in this Mississippi Delta, the, the whatever the, the projects that you are um being shared among many many different regenerative projects cooperatives uh, cohabitation eco villages in a bioregion and being the person that um weaves them together in a bioregion um that you have a a program that can be tailored but it's costumes and telling a story and having a monologue <clears throat> Uh, and it being magical and enchanting and entrancing and sharing your story of the world as you would like it to be as a way of lightening people up to what is their vision for what they're creating right now. And that your act is the beginning of or in the middle of, but just bringing people together into visions and possibility and um, sharing. Um, welcoming events um uh uh yeah that it it being a catalyst and you're being brought in and shared and it's kind of like that's what you do mm, beautiful victoria and everybody wow that's so rich so now we have about uh let's say eight minutes for an open dialogue back and forth and we'll invite max to start that by first of all sharing from what was shared what resonated the most for you and then we'll have a few more minutes for just whoever feels moved to dialogue hmm. uh, i think what what it well I think I what resonates the most for me right now is this sense um, of um, just pursuing this sort of <laughs> existence in a magical reality and offering people a point of contact to that reality and when I say magical I don't mean fictional but sort of like perhaps um, a different paradigm that is magical by comparison to the one that most folks are living in um and just doing that all about and i mean wow i mean i gotta say all of you guys are like visionary psychics out here i i the, the number of images that you guys brought forth was <laughs> i mean you kept me you kept me busy over here so i'm, I'm glad i have my pins ready before you started um but yeah Thank you guys so much. I mean, just to put it in a nutshell, I could say more, but I don't want to stunt the flow. Yeah, thanks, Max. It does feel really good to me, too. Um, and here I'm putting in the instructions for us for the generative dialogue. So reflect together on the remarks of the case giver, which is Max, and move into generative dialogue on how these observations can offer new perspectives. Go with the flow of the dialogue, build on each other's ideas, stay in service of the case giver without pressure to fix or resolve their challenge. So I think I'll invite, is there a thread that's been spoken that you want to pick up on and move forward with or what what's coming up for us? We have about six minutes. Yeah. 
I mean, you know, uh, to the point of there being, um, let's say, I don't remember what you were referring to, Maya, a pole with ribbons around it, or there being some kind of um, a fixed um, uh, communally held, um, let's say, route or something like that. Like, what maybe can we think about in terms of the core of what I'm orbiting as far as how to what to think about in terms of drawing the network or yeah that's what I'll leave uh with so if someone wants to pick up that thread or uh Shane has his <coughs> I'm not sure how it connects, but I'm sure it does. Um, the image is the maypole, and the fertility is a, is a big part of that, um, fecundity, and seasonal changes even. Um, you know, there's a lot of earth, earthiness in it. Um, and what Max reminded me of that I had, I think, forgotten was um, the magic. And the remarkable phrasing you used for the magic was about being a sentient being on a, was it miraculous earth? I, I'm not sure. Um, but the uniqueness of this living, this experience of being alive. Um, I, I wonder if that's a focal point um, that that could. When I heard it again, when you said magic again, that came back to me, and I just feel um, really moved by it. Thank you, Shane. We have about three more minutes. So Victoria, what do you have to share? Uh, the, the Maypole, as soon as someone mentioned that, I think it was you, Maya, that, that brought in the image of the Maypole. I was thinking that that's part of who you are. I mean, that just seems so relevant. And as I look at it now, the weaving, I've never really thought that the Maypole wove something, but it was like, oh yeah individuals in a certain level group uh, um, at different levels of, you know, like self, community group, family, you know, like the kind of concentric circles that go from people, an individual to the whatever, that we are maypoles upon maypoles. There's a maypole here and one here and one here and one here. So I just see that as part of who you are that you create that weaving of people into a fabric and those other levels doing the same thing. Nice. So Max, if you want to respond, it's supposed to be an open dialogue, but we're running out of time a bit. So uh, Jonathan. Well. The image that came to me was that of a dervish, the whirling and the magic and the entrancement and telling stories. Hard to hear you, Jonathan. Uh, so I don't know much about the tradition of the dervish, but I think it might be something that you might want to explore. And, you know, these are kind of archetypal images in a sense that you can bring to people that are just so important and profound and beautiful uh, compared to the kind of commercial stuff that we have to deal with most of the time. So that was the, the image that came, and I don't know really what it means, but thank you. So I'm going to go ahead since we're 
basically at the end of this segment um, and uh, introduce the very last part is uh, just for us to each have, in a way, a 30, se 30 second final words, which is optional, but um, what's the final image or feeling or metaphor that you want to leave Max with? And as my contribution, I'm only going to echo the echo. I think JP was um, quoting you, Max. Reincorporating the grandeur of being a sentient being on a miraculous planet. So the coaches are invited to each take a turn, 30 seconds, and then Max will have the last little checkout. Victoria, you're muted. Jonathan mentioned the whirling dervish. I don't know anything about it, but I, I have been told that I was something like that back in Atlantis and that Jonathan and I were together in that lifetime. And that I I did that and I absorbed people's pain. Jonathan was my protector. Uh, that's what I did. During the time of Atlantis, when we knew what the what was coming and nobody was doing anything about it. So at very similar times. Beautiful. Shane. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say it was um, a real honor, I think, to be a coach in this context. Um, really. Is really enjoyed the opportunity to reflect and uh, share a little. Thanks, Max and Maya, for sure. Thank you, Shane. Chad. Yeah, Max, I get the sense already that uh, you're deepening your embodiment of the spirit and the practice, um, because I mean, here in this session, uh, we're not only walking through the practice, but I get the sense that you're practicing already in the session with your innate poetry. And I can see that reflected in how we've been in our own images infected or perhaps infused <laughs> with, the, with, with, with their lightness and um, mirth. Yeah. Mirth. <laughs> Any other final? comments from the coaches. JP. The bard is the shaman. Mm -hmm. And Pam. It's all a learning journey. And you're well on your way. And I look forward to regular posts on the road. Beautiful. Okay, Max, this is your uh, final reflections, comments. What would you like to say? I'd like to say that um, I just, I feel very like, I feel lighter, you know, which to Shane's point will help me get over that fence at the top of the hill. Um, because I feel like I'm, I feel like you guys did a really wonderful job of reflecting um, maybe some of my more useful energies that I'm not really often thinking about these days because I'm so focused on the uh, minutia of everyday life. So I, I appreciate being, I appreciate my own vision being reflected to me in a way that <laughs> enables me to actually see it, you know, in, in, in its grandeur, uh, um, right now. So, uh, really, uh, got a lot of useful stuff here on the page. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I think that I'm going to 
um, spend the next several minutes just feeling into um, the positive feelings that I currently am harboring. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much, everybody. I Seriously, every single one of you has said very, very helpful things to me today. Um, and I'm not just saying that to be polite. So uh, thanks very much. <laughs> yeah, thank oh. you, Max. Oh, yes. Oh, and also just, you know, uh, in case you guys were curious, Chad and I uh, and Sarah all ate dinner. Um, was it the night before last? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Where are we the pictures? Prove it. We have a picture to prove it. There is a picture to prove it. Yes. Yes, indeed. And I, I got the news that they had cookies together, and then I got <laughs> it was... sure. So beautiful. I felt like I'm so proud of all of us. And so glad for you, Max. And um, thank you for being in the warm seat. And um, so now we have uh, time to reflect on how did that go? And if we have extra time, we can um, talk more about Jonathan's idea moving forward. Uh, yeah, so it's sort of open now. And uh, Victoria, I had you down as the, the feedback person if you want to say anything about getting feedback or um, anyway, here we are in sort of the meta moments of yeah. feedback. Well, I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was great, every part of it. I'll I'll think about specifics about it, but every every role that people played was just great. The outcome was amazing. The process was great. I would love to see this continue. I think I don't know that people would really get tired of it. Uh, so I mean, we in the after we finish the feedback, you know, this part of the thing, uh, we could talk about what's next. Nice. Jonathan. Well, what what I saw and really appreciated was this layering of archetypes and just the whole deep sense of what, you know, how that connects us back through our history and through our evolution uh, and what it brings to people that you bring this kind of music to them and and really this is probably the most beautiful way that I can imagine of being a bioregional weaver because it, you know it, it kind of gives you an entree and it, and, and it you know I don't know anybody who would decline to listen to some music <laughs> to listen to you play you know and uh so I, I just think it's wonderful, and I think it's so um, clear how this process evokes the, the central images and possibilities of what you've been expressing yourself. So it's carrying you forward, uh, and it's carrying the rest of us forward along with you. I really appreciate that. Beautiful. Pamela. Who else was in uh, the meeting this morning where Poem was talking about the evolution of his directory? What was the name of that group on um, the Community Resilience Tour where there was this road show? It looked like they were in a caravan. Do you remember the name of that group? Uh, Chad, no. Yeah. Um, if you have a chance to talk to Poyam, um, Max, there was this very uh, neat encounter he had at a, at a vital point in his life, which ended up leading to this development of this directory. But the directory is not the end of the story. But anyway, it was a community resilience tour. And it was with a whole bunch of people and it was cross-disciplinary. So there were 
artists and magicians and musicians and scientists and, you know, um, a whole mess of different kinds of energies in there. Check it out with them. There might be something kind of fertile in that ground. Thanks, Pam. JP. Mm. So this for me was an experience of what the, the First Nations people here have awkwardly translated into dream time. And I could, I could use a lot more of it myself. So I could see this becoming a little bit of a, a tradition here might be great this sort of community dreaming in support of right livelihood i love that community dreaming in support of right livelihood i love that the uh the meta sort of question future question is um like i feel like it feels good like what we just did and i feel like max feels good about it and my question is then sort of echoing back into some previous conversations in this group where it's like wait but then how does it really help so my question would be hey max you know when you know how did it help like that would be interesting to know in the future if you if if you ever connect the dots kind of thing um i'd be curious about that so um any more uh sort of feedback kinds of things before we hand it back over to jonathan yeah, I'll just say, uh, Maya, it was really helpful that you updated my re remaining time in the chat for keeping me on track. So that's definitely useful, I think. Yeah, yeah great. I, I noticed how following someone else's pattern and including her like chat thing really helped me to uh, feel like I was communicating and uh yeah so i'm glad that worked for you um so shane maybe you'll be the last one and then we'll hand it over to jonathan maybe this question came to me earlier i was wondering if max had coaching or alternatively how much prep time went into this like did you did you prepare yourself and and yeah what was involved in that if i may Yeah, uh, Maya and I met uh, prior to this meeting. Uh, um, we had about probably effectively 10 minutes to talk about what was going to happen. Um, I also had spent a fair amount of time kind of thinking about how to relay. Um, actually, uh, I looked briefly into Theory U and just kind of grabbed onto this notion of what is a, a, a central tension that one is facing and had been kind of thinking about that over the past couple of days at least and so i had that kind of preparation as well thanks and following up on that basic question the the two sessions that i've been in and the example video i watched um people weren't prepared ahead of time to be the person in the the case giver uh it was chosen in the moment through their method of choosing and people came in off the cuff so it works in any case i think so with that said thank you all for undergoing another experiment and uh jonathan i'll pass it back to you now oh and thank you chad again for helping even though he was quiet i told him just knowing he's there would be like very helpful and it was and wonderful meditation thank you yeah i was just you know i've i've looked at theory you but i have never been in a process that was this effective using the tools and the ideas 
And so uh, to me, this was a, a real model for how it should work. And so I thank everyone for their contributions, and particularly Max, uh, for evoking all these images of, um, you know, truly meaningful roles. Uh, it was an interesting thing. We, um, we were sitting outside just before coming in, and we saw this pattern of birds flying above us. And it was like they were doing a dance uh, because there was no, you know, it's not like they were just flocking together to go somewhere. They were all swerving around and going up and down and in between and, uh, you know, just, um, you know, it seemed like they were creating this pattern purely for the beauty of the pattern that there wasn't anything that they were essentially looking for. They were really just communicating uh, the wonder of the pattern. So uh, that's kind of really all I uh, wanted to say about uh, this. I uh, hope to write up my little idea that I threw out at the beginning uh, and offer it at another session, perhaps the one that's you know, at the other time frame. And, uh, you know, I just invite people to submit ideas for and proposals for how to use this time. Uh, and, you know, the, the ultimate purpose, I think, is to, uh, I think JP said it the other day, that quoting Buckminster Fuller, that if everything did what they came on this earth to do, uh, there would be no unemployment. There would be no uh, issue. I mean, we really have the capacity to create kind of enormous well-being uh, for each other and for the earth. And the puzzle is why we haven't been doing that, because it's so much better than what we have been doing. So that's all I wanted to say. And, uh, you know, I think maybe if everybody wants to say a word on the way out, then we'll wrap it up. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time. And if something emerges in between, I'll kind of edit the event a little bit to let people know about it. Um, and uh, that's the way it goes. So uh, let's have one person start and then pass it along to another. Whoever wants to. Jonathan, before in. we do that, can we talk about next time? Sure. And also, it would be great to see if anybody had any healing done with the blue circles from the meditation. Right. Um, so uh, why don't we just ask Maya, what do you recommend for next time? That would be, we could start there. What do I recommend for next time? Yeah. Uh, in regards to what we're doing or yeah what would we just have somebody else uh do a warm seat and do the same process I, i'm happy to that this felt flowy to me and i'm happy to to support that again if it wants to happen and i also want to make sure that if there's other things that want to happen that it's not like maya's show kind of thing so but i am totally happy to lead that again mm -hmm. And there is a recording, by the way, Max, so Jonathan can send that to you. Um, that might I'll be... I'll post it. Oh, you'll I'll post, post it. it. That's right. Yeah. For, for the group. Yeah. It's yeah. listed, but... If I may, I want to just pop in the um, chat here. If anyone's interested in seeing Yannick do the coaching, I put that link in there as an example, because mm -hmm. I want to give her all the credit. Mm. And is there a next person that wants to be on the warm seat? At one point, Chad mentioned that he might do it. Are you still interested? Um, um, if I'm ready, yeah. I think that's a wonderful process. When I'm ready, I'd like to do it.
You know, we might want to do something like the Project Incubator does, which is, you know, put the schedule and let people self-nominate. Okay, well, maybe Chad, you and I could be in touch and if, uh, if and you decide and then maybe I'll feel out to see who else might want to play if you don't want to or if you're not ready yet. I would like to too. I, I'm at a point in my life where this would be might be very helpful. Nice. Okay, so we'll have someone for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, Chad wants to do it. Can we, um, do we know what the date is? Jonathan, maybe? Um, yeah, it's, you know, a month from today on the same, uh, you know, time each month and, and the dates are all listed in the event. Um, it's just, we, we started off thinking we'd do a monthly thing and then we realized that not everybody could make this time. So we made a second monthly thing and they sort of overlap and crisscross. And so it means that there are groups doing this every two weeks, uh, but it's often a different group and it's, you know, people can go in different directions. So uh, all the dates are listed, I think, in Mighty Networks on the event page. Uh, and if anybody has any comments or you know I love it when people actually write stuff in response to events or tell the story because part of what I think attracts people to conversations like this is when they find out god that was amazing you know <laughs> and so so they get that sort of FOMO uh and uh you know they they want more uh, of what the community is offering. And, you know, that's what I think is so helpful and healing. And, yeah, it's not necessarily, certainly not today about the money or the, you know, how you make a living, quote unquote. I mean, like, it's how you live and how you do what you are here to do in a way that makes sense for you and for everyone else. So that's all I wanted to say. And, you know, we're very open about how we use this time. Thank you again, Jonathan and Victoria. Shall we go to the one word checkouts as Jonathan was suggesting? Um, Ah, the, my one word checkout is ribbons. JP. <laughs> and mine is murmuration. Shane. That's got to be mirth. <laughs> Pamela. Whoa. Victoria. Truth. Oh, Jonathan? Joy. Oh, you started it. No, no I didn't really. Uh, Maya did. But that's good. I mean, I think we're, we're perfect. We're a little three minutes over time. I just thank you all so much for being here. It's really special. And I look forward to seeing you again next time. And tell all your friends about this. Wow. Good energy. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Great. Uh, thank you both. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm. Uplifted. <laughs> Beautiful. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it.